Your Massachusetts real estate market update for December 5th, 2022. So as always, we're going to go over the single family and condo market for the week of December 5th, 2022, but a little bit different. Normally in the beginning of each month, I go over that last month's monthly data. I'm not going to do that this month because I'm actually going to do a separate video on it. So be on the lookout for that. Should be uh, I should be releasing that in the next couple of days here. Uh, interest rates, they were lower, but they were stable. So some great news there, but all eyes are on next week. This week's a little bit of a boring week in that sense. Distressed properties in Massachusetts, more of the same, but we're going to chat about that. The luxury segment, there were no newer listings listed, so I got to choose. And I actually chose a pretty cool house, I think at least, at 151 Grove Street in uh, Westwood. Um, I mean, they got a dog room, so why not take a look at it? Uh, hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I am a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses. Should you have any questions about the Massachusetts real estate market, then I look forward to being that resource for you. So on to the single family market. In the single family market, we had 4,491 units that are currently on the market. Now, inventory, it continues to decrease as we approach, approach Christmas. Uh, in the last three weeks, we've actually dropped 813 units. Now, interesting, the difference in the amount of homes available to buyers actually decreased. So we now have 1,406 homes, uh, more homes currently on the market than we did at the same time last year. But when we look at last week, we actually had 1,484 homes. So I don't exactly have an opinion opinion as to what this means. It's something that I'm going to keep my eye on. I have an idea of what this is meaning, but I just want to see another couple weeks before I really dive into this metric and, and see if what I am thinking is actually true. We had 610 newly listed properties come on the market. Now, the average amount of new listings in uh, November as well as October was 877. So December, it's a slower month. This is it to be expected. People just, they hold off on price reductions and they hold off on uh, listing their homes until the uh, new year just because they don't want to deal with having their house on the market, people trampling through uh, during the holidays, which by the way, if you are one of those sellers on there because of this reason, limited inventory, that can sometimes mean a uh, better market for you to sell in. There were 676 single family homes that went under agreement last week. Now the average four week rolling average has been 830. So we're about 18 and a half percent below that average last week. There were 1,007 single family houses that sold last week. Now look, this was the end of the month at the end of every single month. This is when we expect to see a sales surge. So no different here. The average sales price was $718,000. Meanwhile, the median sales price was $569,000. Then that months of inventory, months of inventory is how we gauge what type of market are we in? Is it a hot seller's market? That's zero to five months. Five months to seven months is an equal market. And seven months or more is what we consider a buyer's market. So for months of inventory, it actually continued to tick down. We have 1.38 months worth of inventory uh, for sale in the state of Massachusetts in the single family segment. And this is compared to last week when we had 1.39 months worth of inventory. So this is really signaling that it's still a strong seller's market and it's improving to become a better seller's market. And that's really because we're starting to see that inventory inventory decrease, uh, large inventory decreases as we see so many sellers taking their properties off the market, like I said, because it is December and it is around the holidays. So on to that condo market. We had 2,331 units that were on the market. Now, inventory decreased by 432 units just in the last week. That's about 15.6% uh, decrease in the amount of inventory that's available to home buyers. Buyers have 232 more units to choose from than the same time last year, which when we compare it to last week, it was 231 units. Essentially, this just tells me that inventory is dropping at the same rate as last year, as of right now. Uh, there are 200. 89 newly listed condos that came on the market this week. Now, the October and November average was 378, so we were pretty far below that average. Uh, 279 condos went under agreement last week. Again, that at October as well as November average was 355 units. Again, it's December. It's going to be a little bit slower than those averages. We we had 373 condos closed last week. The average sales price was $622,000. Meanwhile, the median sales price was $489,000. Then that months of inventory, uh, months of inventory actually decreased in the condo market just like it did in the uh, single family market. We currently have 1.91 months worth of inventory on the market, and this is down from last week's 1.96 months worth of inventory. Do you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market? Uh, if so, then I appreciate you consider uh, subscribing, and if you have haven't already done so, can you hit that like button? It just makes a huge, huge difference to those YouTube gods in regards to my channel.
So on to the mortgage market. Like I said earlier, not a whole lot going on here, which is just like we like it. I mean, it's just, it's just so great that we haven't seen any huge increased swings in the mortgage rate environment. Currently, interest rates are somewhere in the high 5 to low 6% range. Now, this all, of course, depends on what type of program you're going in. For example, jumbo loans might be a little bit higher. And also what your credit score is. The higher the credit score, then ultimately the higher your interest rate. So that's where you're ultimately going to see those variances between your interest rates. Now, like I said, it's been a quiet week this week, and that's been great because all the eyes are on actually next week when we have some really big data and some big things going on. Uh, we've got the consumer price index happening, but we also have the federal funds rate announcement. Um, those are the big two. Now, as I've said a million and a half times, don't pay too much attention to that federal funds rate announcement. It's really that 10-year treasury that ultimately tells us and what our mortgage rates ultimately follow. So if you see from these two big headline news that the 10-year treasury either had a huge swing down or a huge swing up, then that's ultimately what's going to mean that that's what happened with the interest rates for our homes. So let's talk foreclosures. Accounting for all single family condos as well as multifamilies for sale in the whole state of Massachusetts, we currently have 124 foreclosures for sale and currently 33 short sale properties for sale. So that's a total distressed property inventory in the state of Massachusetts of 157 units. Now available distressed inventory to regular units actually um, is 2.02% uh, .02%, and really ultimately that's up from last Last week's 1.98 percent and that's again because of the uh, decrease in the amount of inventory that we've had in the single family condo as well as the multi-family markets that we're just seeing that seasonal decrease now something that's really interesting is massachusetts is now ranked number 21 out of all the states um, in the month of october for foreclosure activity and what's interesting here is is that is actually up about 10 spots since i last saw that piece of data a couple months ago so we are starting to see a a little bit more uh, bigger, I should say, increase in the amount of foreclosure activity. Um, what's the number one state in the whole entire country, you ask? Well, that's a great question. It's actually Illinois, followed by Delaware, uh, New Jersey, South Carolina, and Nevada. Those are the top five. So Massachusetts, we're not anywhere close to there. We're still the 21st um, in the state in that foreclosure activity. We're the 15th most populated state in the country. So um, still not bad, but we it's something, again, that we want to keep our eye on as uh, we continue to work our way down on that scale. That's not what we want to do. And now onto that luxury home. Like I said, pretty cool spot, 151 Grove Street. When you look at that front picture, it kind of reminded me, I don't know if you remember the movie Money Pit, that initial like entrance in, I don't know. I think that's what caught my eye. Uh, great movie, by the way. You got to see it if you haven't seen it. An oldie, but a goodie. Um, this home has actually multiple buildings and is a total of 15 bedrooms, 10 full baths, and then two and a half baths and spans in total more than 14,000 square feet. Now the property consists of a main house, in-law house, guest house, caretaker house, as well as a barn. It's nestled on 27 acres and is extremely private. This home is stunning on the inside, and they have 10 fireplaces throughout, a beautiful kitchen that has a fireplace, a dog room for my lab, and of course, and even that, what I, they then call an Adirondack room, which is pretty cool. The second level of the main house offers a master suite, which includes a master bath, the fireplace, and roof deck access, plus an additional eight bedrooms rooms on that level. Now the home also has an enclosed breezeway which leads to the separate in-law house. Not an in-law suite but an actual in-law house and it does have three bedrooms and three full baths so I guess it's pretty fair to say that it's an in-law house. Now you don't want to miss the additional caretaker house, four stall barn, tennis court and pool. This stunning home is listed for 15 and a half million dollars. Want to talk about your own real personal real estate goals, then I would love to chat with you. Real estate's a passion of mine. I love doing this. You can find all my information in the description below. I always love chatting with folks just like yourself and just talking about their real estate goals. How can we accomplish that? Whether you're looking to move in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't really matter. I'd love to talk to you now and just get an idea of what you're looking for. So that way I can ultimately really just start working for you and keeping my eyes open and, and starting to gauge the market for you. Uh, any questions or concerns about any of the data that I went over, please throw them in the comment section below. I love hearing from you. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. So I'm always going to respond to all your questions, comments, and concerns. Uh, keep in mind that an informed person is a powerful, powerful person. So until next week.